Hey, welcome back to Optimize Your Website with our AMP. In this lesson, we're gonna go through a checklist of everything that we're gonna to need to include in our site development process in order to optimize our site as well as we could if we were using AMP. This checklist is part tasks that we need to complete, it's part principles that we need to follow, and it's also part goals that we wanna achieve. So the first thing on our list is a goal, and that is we want our site to load as fast or faster than the AMP version of the same site. So you saw in the last video that we have already established that our end result is going to be as fast or faster than the AMP version. And it's a good idea to keep checking on your load time as you go along with your development process. So that's what we're gonna be doing as we work through everything. And then the next item on our checklist, we're starting to get into the technical things that we need to do. The first consideration is that we wanna get any web fonts that we're gonna be using loading as fast as possible. Web fonts are often relatively large files and you can't show your content properly until those web fonts are loaded. So we're gonna make sure that we get those web fonts loading very early in the picture probably as the first thing that starts loading. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that our CSS is very efficient and very small in size. Sometimes we can be tempted to take a shortcut and include a massive library of CSS into our sites to help speed up the development process, even if most of that CSS is really not necessary. So throwing in a massive CSS file might help speed up your development, but it's probably gonna slow down your websites and it's probably gonna diminish the performance of your sites in the search engines. I say that because load speed is now a ranking factor. So it's important for your CSS to be as small and efficient as possible. And we're also gonna take that CSS and we're gonna load it in line into the head section of the site. Now, this is a technique that AMP uses and it is an excellent optimization technique. So that's one that we're definitely gonna be holding onto with our own optimization process. But even though our CSS is going to be in line in the head section, we still want to work on our CSS in separate files. Trying to write CSS directly into the head section of an HTML file is really not very practical. So we're gonna get everything set up so that we can work on our CSS files externally, then have them in line in our HTML files later so we get the best of both worlds. The next thing that we're going to do is make sure that to the greatest degree possible, any JavaScript that we are using is combined and minified. I mentioned one of the downsides of working with AMP is you have multiple JavaScript files that you have to bring in and each one of them has to come in separately. But to the greatest extent possible, we're gonna take our JavaScript and we're gonna combine it into a single file so that we have the absolute minimum number of browser requests. And to make both of those things happen, working on CSS externally and combining and minifying JavaScript, we're gonna set up a build process that will make both of these things happen automatically. So we're gonna be using Gulp to do that. That means that you are gonna to have to have Node installed on your system, and you're also gonna to have to dabble a little bit in using a terminal. But I'll step you through what to do, so even if you haven't worked with a terminal before, you should be just fine. Next up, when it comes to JavaScript, we're only going to be using async JavaScript, so asynchronous JavaScript. So in a nutshell, what this means is the way we're gonna load our JavaScript is not gonna prevent anything else in the page from loading at the same time. And then another thing that we'll be doing with our JavaScript is we're gonna be deferring it. So that means that we're going to push our JavaScript right to the end of the rendering process. We're gonna make sure everything else in our site is fully loaded before we do anything with JavaScript at all. We're also going to make sure that every bit of JavaScript we use is vanilla JavaScript. And we're doing this to make sure that we don't have dependencies. If we use, say, a light box that depends on jQuery, now we have to load jQuery into our site and that's more file size and more processing for the browser to handle. It's often not necessary to use multiple JavaScript libraries. You can often achieve the functionality that you want just as well with vanilla JavaScript. We're also going to prefer simple JavaScript. So we're going to try to keep the amount of file size that our JavaScript takes up down to an absolute minimum. We don't want lots of bells and whistles. We wanna keep everything as tight and efficient as possible. And the last point on JavaScript is that we wanna make sure that to the best degree we can, we cater to people who have JavaScript turned off. Now, I just wanna show you something quickly with the AMP version and the non-AMP version of the site that we're gonna be creating. So this is the AMP version of our page. And if we turn off JavaScript, you can see that we don't really have much content to look at. And in fairness, there is a little bit more that we could do with this site to make it a little bit more fallback friendly. But for the most part, AMP does really fully depend on JavaScript in order to give you any type of content at all. And with our non-AMP version, we've still got our background image showing just fine. 
And we're actually also inserting some fallback for the font icons here as well, because often people who block JavaScript block fonts as well. We have a message letting people know why the YouTube video can't appear. And the same thing down here where our code pen would be, we have a message letting people know why they're not seeing anything. And our gallery still shows up just the same. And then down the bottom, we just have the text version of our tweets showing as a fallback in case there's no JavaScript. All right, so that's a quick look at our JavaScript fallbacks. We are also going to make sure we use lazy loading on both images and iframes. So what that does is if you have a site that is quite long, a person is typically going to look at what's at the top of that website first, and then they'll scroll down and have a look at the rest of the content. But you don't want to make them wait for the rest of that content to load before they can start looking at what's at the top of the content. So with lazy loading, you only load what's at the top first, and then you gradually load the rest of the content as a person scrolls down. And then finally, we're also going to make sure that we prevent reflow. Something you'll often see, especially on mobile, is that as slower elements load in, like images, for example, the rest of the page layout has to readjust itself around the newly loaded image. Now, this is bad for a couple of reasons. One, it's just really annoying for a user. They'll be looking in one place and then the whole layout changes and they lose the piece of text that they were reading. They have to refind it again, then it reflows again, and the whole experience is just very bad. The second reason that we want to avoid reflow is that one of the most expensive things that a browser has to do is calculate layout. You want to make sure that the browser only has to calculate layout once. So even before your images have loaded, you want to make sure that you've allocated the correct space for those images so that the first layout that loads is the correct layout. So that's our optimization checklist. We're going to check off each of these items as we go through and prepare our site that's optimized without AMP. In the next lesson, we're going to get started on the actual development process. And we're going to begin by just getting the basics of our project in place. I mentioned that we're going to be using Gulp by way of Node to handle our build process. So we're going to get that set up. We're going to get our folder structure set up and we're going to get the Gulp plugins that we need installed and our Gulp file up and running. So we're going to get that development ball rolling in the next lesson. I'll see you there.